Um, uh, Matt, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, this this is uh, Castelli for Congress, by the way. C A S T E L L I F O R Congress dot com is the website. Castelli Matt on Twitter. Um, Matt, uh, tell us about taking on Elise Stefanik. I mean, a lot of people think this is a a fool's errand that that you're uh, tilting at windmills here. Well. We actually have a tremendous opportunity to defeat Stefanik in this race because she's gone way out of step with the values of our community here in the 21st district. Thanks for the opportunity to, to join your program. Up here in northern New York, this is a district that is home to the largest number of veterans, folks who swore an oath to the Constitution. This is a district that is pretty middle of the road, likes to come together to solve problems, not create more of them. And when they first elected Elise Stefanik many years ago, they thought they were getting a moderate. Her pivot towards the far right, to, towards ultra magaism is only a recent occurrence, and it's turned off a lot of voters here in the district. Uh, this is a district that elected Barack Obama twice. It elected Bill Owens, a former Democratic a congressman here in the district, uh, before he retired and gave the seat up, and uh, Elise Stefanik was elected at that point. So there's a proud moderate tradition here in the district, and they look at Elise Stefanik's embrace of the far right, embrace of these extreme policies, and they're really turned off by it. So we're building a coalition of not just strong support from Democrats who are interested in uh, ref sending her home and firing her in this election, but a lot of independents. It's a district that's home to 30 percent of registered voters are independents and unaffiliated. So you got to build a coalition here. And we've got a lot of Republicans who are supporting us in this campaign, not MAGA Republicans, but mega Republicans, the make Elise go away Republicans. And so this coalition <laughs> that we're building is pretty strong. And we're this is turning into one of the most important races in the country because of what we're about to achieve. I think it's I think it's spectacular, Matt. It's why I wanted to have you on the program. I you know that you're that you're uh, you know this is David versus Goliath here. And, 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 and if you remember, if you remember, David won that race. Exactly. And I think you have a chance. Um, I wish the Democratic Party would support you a little more aggressively. What, you know, it's, it's generally, I mean, you know, conventional wisdom in politics is that it's not enough to run against, you know, or to run a campaign based on my, my opponent's a crook, um, that you have to offer some kind of positive vision. What do you see as the major issues in this election where you and, and Stefanik differ? other than you know her, her love and adoration for Donald Trump and all things fascist. Well, so here in the district, and some of that experience of hers may fall into this uh, sort of narrative, which is true, is that Stefanik has sold us out. She's all about advancing her own career at the expense of not just our country. We saw that on January 6th, and we've seen it since then, but certainly our district. She's refused to make investments in the areas that we need. This is a district that is struggling. Uh, so many folks may be looking at uh, the country being potentially on the wrong path or considering that our district is on the wrong path. And it's been on the wrong path for the eight, last eight years that Congresswoman Stefanik has been in office. She's refused to make investments in our future. And so many of the, the challenges that we see working families struggling with, the rising costs of daily life, things like child care, affordable housing, health care and prescription drugs. Yes, certainly food and groceries and gas prices. But many of these issues have long been issues and challenges for working families. And we need a representative who's actually going to focus on solving them. So that's top of the, the top of the list for us. Also, freedom. Listen, freedom's on the ballot this this November, and Stefanik is right now leading this assault against certainly a woman's right to choose to control her own body and make her own health care decisions. She's advocating and is the highest ranking Republican to advocate for a national ban on abortion. That's targeting blue states like New York, where we do have certain protections, but a national ban would, would threaten those protections. And so defending and protecting, particularly a woman's right to choose, is on the ballot and something we're going to fight for here as well. And our safety and security. And yes, that's going to be about funding law enforcement and securing our borders, but it's going to be about protecting and defending our democracy as well, because that's been under threat, uh, certainly in the last uh, couple of years. And Stefanik's been leading the charge. As a former national security officer, can you speak to the, the kinds of damage that might have been done to our national security by the Trump administration during the time they were in. And, and also, I understand that for a while you worked under General Michael Flynn. You know, what the hell happened to that guy? Yeah, well, so I uh, served as the director for counterterrorism at the National Security Council, first in the Obama administration, and then I was asked to stay on in that role doing strategy and policy work on the counterterrorism front during the Trump uh, administration as well. And I did that for the first year of the Trump White House. And uh, the first three weeks of the Trump administration were, was the extent of uh, General Flynn's tenure as national security advisor. And then, as you may recall, he was fired. I believe he was fired uh, for lying to the, the, the vice president, then Mike Pence, 
as well as some uh, lies with respect to the FBI. Yeah, about being got, on the take from a foreign government. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> most, certainly, wow. most, certainly, most certainly there were some significant challenges there. And we've seen a lot of foreign influence in actors that found their way in and out of the former administration. And I think that that's really something that was a, a key challenge of the former administration. Certainly this America alone foreign policy, I think, was the, the greatest threat that, that we saw in a major shift. Some people called it America first. It really was about America alone because it, it sought to remove the kind of support that we would provide to our allies and partners. Folks are looking right now and considering this war in Ukraine and Russia's assault on, on freedom and democracy there. And so much of that was an attempt to cash in on investments that Russia had made over the last decade or so, undermining not just our own democratic processes, but advancing uh, efforts across Europe and Western uh, Europe and creating a sense of populism, nationalism, and getting people to stop believing in, well, we need to support each other in an international community. The America alone foreign policy sought to defund NATO. Uh, so when Putin invaded Ukraine, it was really an attempt to cash in on that uh, investment that was made over the course of many years, certainly during the Trump administration as well. And my belief in the foreign policy that I b believe in and I think creates a greater degree of protection is that while America is the strongest nation in the world, we're even stronger when we work with partners and allies. This false notion of one side versus the other, where you've got some that want to turn America into the world police, that's not acceptable. But withdrawing completely from the world is also not acceptable. Both of those things leave America less secure. And I think that's the challenge that we have, uh, certainly stemming from the, the former Trump administration and their foreign policy approach. We're talking with Matt Costelli, a former CIA officer uh, who is now in the Obama administration and briefly in the Trump administration, who is now running for Congress in New York's 21st district uh, to, for the U.S. House of Representatives against the number three Republican in America, or at, at least in Congress, uh, Elise Stefanik. Um, Castelli for Congress, C-A-S-T-E-L-L-I-F-O-R-Congress.com is the website. Matt uh, Castelli Matt is his Twitter handle. And, and uh, Matt, what... How how is this? What what? Well, I guess the the essential question I wanted to ask you is, what kind of support are you getting from the DNC? I I had read that uh, the DNC basically figured, hey, you know, Stefanik, you can't beat her. Why bother? Uh, that they haven't been supporting you that much. I don't know if that's an old story or if that's the case right now. Um, you know, where where are you at with regard to to institutional support, as it were? Well, as, as your uh, listeners may understand, the, the, the institution uh, is having a hard time, I think, defending a lot of territory across this nation. Uh, there are a lot of seats that are in jeopardy that maybe shouldn't have been. And so I think that's where much of their focus is, rather than being as aggressive as they should be, in flipping some red to blue. And we certainly have an opportunity to do this here. This is one of the most important races in the country because Stefanik is vulnerable back here at home. And there's no person on the ballot this November that is more responsible for this ongoing threat to our democracy than Elise Stefanik. Your listeners may recall in the aftermath of January 6th, there was a moment where leaders in the Republican Party and the Senate and in the House uh, could have made a determination to distance themselves from this ultra MAGA uh, movement that poses such a threat. And Elise Stefanik was really the architect in saying, no, we're going to embrace it. She stabbed Liz Cheney in the back. She took on that role as the number three in House Republican leadership, their conference chair. The she messaging. replaced Liz Cheney. Exactly. She stabbed her in the back to replace her and took on the messaging role. So all of the messaging we're now seeing in advancing these uh, draconian measures, these extreme policies around uh, you know, attacking our freedoms, certainly even this pamphlet that they released last week, all of this is at the hands of Elise Stefanik. And here in our race, we have a tremendous opportunity to defeat her. And we're getting support. Maybe not, it's not coming from the institution, but it's coming from Democrats, not just in our district, but all across the country, because they understand the importance of this race and what November 9th represents when we defeat Stefanik, uh, what kind of signal that's going to send, not just to the country, but even within the Republican Party. My mother's a lifelong Republican, and she looks at people like Elise Stefanik and says, that's not my Republican Party. And there are folks within the Republican Party right now who are, are suffering from a, a sense of a political homelessness. We're creating a home in our campaign to bring people together rather than divide folks. So Democrats, independents, and those mega Republicans I talked about, they're coming together and showing what we can do as a nation to come together to reject this threat through our democracy and actually start solving some problems. When you said the pamphlet they released last week, I'm assuming you're talking about Kevin McCarthy's uh, uh, little fluff piece basically on, on what the GOP wants to do? 
Yeah, their their commitment to America. Or yeah, you want to you want to speak to that? Any of the points in that that you'd like to, sure, to highlight? Sure. I mean, you know, Stefanik, I'd rather phrase it as a commitment to selling out. Uh, you know, they, they released four points on the economy. Much of what they highlighted was copying and pasting what Democrats are already doing in Washington. Uh, and also, uh, they want us to forget about the fact that they tried, they voted against every single common sense solution to reduce costs for working families and seniors, whether that's around child care, affordable housing, prescription drugs. You know, on safety and security, they want us to forget that it was their lies that led to this uh, worst assault on law enforcement in our nation's history on January 6th that resulted in the deaths of five police officers and the injuries of over 140. On freedom, they want us to forget about this fact that they're right now attacking the freedoms of women, millions of them across the nation, and depriving them of the right to control their own bodies and make their own health care decisions. And on accountability, it seems like everyone else has to have accountability, but not the senior leaders of their of their party, to include those who are involved in directly, you know, criminal actions, or even with respect to Stefanik. She's not accountable even to voters. She won't even show up and actually have town halls or communicate directly with voters. The press never have access to them. So this pamphlet was really just a sham and doesn't contain any details or opportunities to actually address uh, the major needs that most Americans have, and in, in, in certainly in our district, but I think across the nation. Yeah. So if you like what you hear, Matt Costelli, former CIA officer, is running for Congress, the 21st District of New York, upstate New York, against Republican Elise Stefanik, number three in leadership in the House of Representatives. CostelliforCongress.com is the website, C-A-S-T-E-L-L-I for F-O-R, Congress.com. Costelli Matt, M-A-T-T, -T, is his Twitter handle. Matt, thanks a lot for dropping by, and good luck. Thanks, Tom. Great to be with you. Back.